guys! My name is Autumn and I'm making this video to share my portfolio and my college application journey with you guys. I'll also be sharing some tips that I learned throughout my journey so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I applied to a total of 7 schools and I got accepted to all of them and these are the schools that I got applied to. And these are the schools that gave me scholarships. Just before I get started, I want to remind you guys that this is my first time making a YouTube video so please be mindful of that. And also the tips that I'll be sharing with you guys later on in this video are purely based on my experience and opinions. So please don't take them all too seriously and get overwhelmed. And only take the ones that might benefit you guys. And with that said, let's get into the video. To start things off, my portfolio is a total of 17 pieces. And I picked a total of 7 pieces that I'm going to go over with you guys in more detail. And the rest, I'm just going to quickly skim through them. And I'll make sure to leave description for you guys to read them if you like. And here we go. The first piece that I'm going to introduce to you guys is called Who is Autumn? This is an oil painting that I did last summer and it was the first artwork that I put in my portfolio since I thought it was my strongest. Basically the idea came from my dirty room. It was this one time when I accidentally invited my friend over forgetting that I haven't cleaned my room in weeks. So my room was a hot mess and I just remember getting so panicked when my friend saw my room. But we actually ended up having a good time because my friend found a bunch of things that she wanted to see since most of my stuff was just lying all around. So yeah, but my idea came from that experience and I thought, hey, why don't I make a painting out of that? So I did, and this took me about 3 months to complete. But since I was just painting stuff that I liked, the process didn't feel boring at all. The final meaning of this piece is for you guys to figure out what kind of person I am. For example, when you look at this poster, you probably notice that I've watched one too many Don't Hug Me I'm Scared videos. And when you look at this wall, you can tell that I had an intense BTS army phase when I was a tween. Moving on to my next artwork, this piece is called Tangled Arguments and this was my RISD assignment. I remember getting so frustrated when doing this because the prompt sounded too hard for me. I had to choose one out of three sets of ideas and I had to make an artwork where the two ideas are in a conversation with each other. Yeah, I was just as confused as you are. But I think it was just about interpreting the prompt in my style, you know, just take it and ask how you understand it. So that's what I did. Um, the two ideas I chose were ephemeral and tangible. This statue is basically me wondering where my lost phone is. I represent an ephemeral as my disappearing phone and represent a tangible as what I believe the state of my phone to be in. To be honest, I don't know why, but I always have this irrational optimism that I'll eventually find my phone even if I don't make a conscious effort to find it. So yeah, that's why I represent a tangible as a state that I believe my phone to be in. And the big thing was that the two ideas need to be in a conversation. So I tried to represent that with the wires. The overall structure of it is inspired by the bead mazes that you guys may have played with when you were kids. And they also have little loops above them so they can move along the wire. But right now, in the picture, they are covered with glue gum because they kept sliding down when I took pictures. So just ignore that. Anyway, as the pieces on the wire move, they are going to face some tension and ease moving through the wiggly wire, just like how conversations have challenges and harmonies as they continue. This is one of my more playful artworks. This piece is called Hey, We're Still On Air. And it's just a fun album cover that I do for the song Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. I try to capture the excitement of the song by drawing this man stepping out of his job just to enjoy the blue sky. This is one of the pieces that I submitted to the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards. And if you guys know what that is, I highly recommend checking their website and seeing if you're eligible to submit your artwork there. And if you guys have no idea what the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards is, it's basically an awards program where you can submit your artworks and potentially get recognition from colleges. I strongly recommend submitting your artworks there because it can really boost up your honor section in the Common App. In my case, this artwork got a national silver medal, and I think the main reason for that was because of the title. It has a dual meaning because it can mean the newsroom is live, and it can also mean that the whole studio is literally on the sky. The next piece is called Realistic Fantasies. This piece is one of my more serious topic ones because it talks about animal cruelty in the dairy industry. It's basically a lamb sculpture that I did based off barns and on the exterior that barn looks completely normal 
but as soon as you open the roof, you can see what's happening inside. I remember being so in shock when I researched for this piece, and I really hope that one day animal cruelty can all end. The next piece is called, Where Did These People Get The License? This piece was inspired by when I went for a walk downtown. You know there's always a bunch of pigeons everywhere in the city? And basically my idea came from that. I was just walking down the street among a bunch of people and I just saw this one pigeon that was struggling to get past because there were a bunch of people walking in front of its way. So I created this painting based on that experience and it's about, hey, I know that pigeons are not the most interesting animals, but they're still living beings, so let's give them some basic recognition and don't just disregard them as urban pets. The next piece is called Circle of Life. This is just a lighthearted fun piece and it's not that deep. This one was for the prompt of Emily Carr and it was about telling a story about myself in three original images. And how I did it was to show how my day generally goes into food form. So the plates each represent appetizers, main dish, and desserts. And I put my morning activities in the appetizer dish and my noon activities in the main dish and so on. Um, here you can see this little guy swimming in the coconut here. Yeah, it's actually for aesthetic, I don't really swim. <laughs> this is a children's book that I created and it's called You Don't Look Like Me. This was kind of a sneaky project that I created to fill out my activity section in the Common App. So what I did was to create a manageable 10 page children's book and publish it on Kindle. If some of you guys are lost on what to do on your next piece in your portfolio, I strongly recommend that you create a storybook so you can put it in your portfolio and also in your activity section. That way you can catch two birds with one stone. That's the end of my portfolio. Hope you liked it. Now, just as I told you before, I'm just going to skim through the rest of my portfolio. So feel free to pause the video and read the descriptions if you like. That's the end of my portfolio, hope you liked it. Now I'm going to tell you some of my tips that I wish I'd known back when I started to apply to colleges. Make sure you don't take this all too seriously and get anxious. I just want to remind you guys that these are tips that work for me and they might not necessarily work for you guys too. To start, I'm going to tell you 5 tips that could be useful when you're just starting out and building your portfolio. Tip number 1. Start making your portfolio. I believe a good time for you to start making your portfolio would be between the grades 10 and 11 so your artworks are relatively recent and show your character and recent skills. I don't really recommend that you start making a portfolio at grade 12 because obviously making a portfolio requires a lot of time and care and when you're grade 12, you wouldn't really have time to do that. So if you're still young and in between the grades 10 and 11, I highly recommend that you start thinking about your portfolio more seriously. Tip number two, buy a sketchbook. This may not be necessary for you guys who already have a fresh sketchbook, and you don't have to buy one if you don't think it's necessary for you guys. But the main reason why I recommend that you buy a new sketchbook is because it gives you a new mindset. You know, as you start to think about some ideas for your portfolio, I think it's better to do that in a fresh one instead of the ones with your personal drawings. And also it's better to have all of your process sketches of your artworks in one sketchbook because some colleges require you to submit your process sketches and that would be difficult if you didn't organize them in one sketchbook. Tip number three, idea sketching. I'm not sure if you guys have your own ways of thinking of new ideas for your artworks, but for those of you who are just starting and feeling lost, I recommend that you idea sketch, which is just sketching ideas for your future pieces of your portfolio. 
It can basically be a quick doodle or a detailed drawing and the way you do it doesn't really matter as long as you're comfortable with it. So later on, these idea sketches would be your process sketches that you could add to your portfolio. Here's a quick view of my example of idea sketching. And for inspirations, I recommend that you check out Behance. Tip number four, experiment with your artworks. You probably heard this a lot, but I'm restating it because it's really important. So what I mean by to experiment is for you to play with your drawing styles and your mediums. It's always a better idea to have a variety of mediums in your portfolio, so don't be afraid to try new things and get experimental. For example, if you're just comfortable with 2D drawings, maybe try multimedia, and then gradually try sculpture as well. Remember that there's no rules in art and you're the boss of your artworks. Tip number five, make a lot of process sketches and record your process. The last but not least tip is for you guys to create a lot of process sketches. Like I said before, some colleges ask you to submit process sketches of your artworks, so it's always a better idea to have several of them so you can show how much time you spend on your artworks and how many times you experimented with it. For example, don't just leave your ideas underdeveloped. Even if you think the idea that you thought of is perfect as is, spend more time on it and think of ways that you can improve on it. So later on, you can have more process sketches that you can put in your portfolio. I'd also recommend that you record the process of you making your artwork. Again, some colleges require you to show the process and it's always a good idea to take a couple of pics of your unfinished stages of your artworks. Like this. This was the photos I took of Who is Autumn. Now I'm just going to share some general tips that could be useful while you're in the process of making your portfolio. Tip number one, have at least two to three figure drawings or observational drawings in your portfolio. This tip could not be relevant to you depending on your major, but most schools that are crap and busy strongly encourage you to put drawings from direct observation. Typically these could be figure drawings, but it can also be still life or portraits. For figure drawings, you don't have to draw naked people if you're not comfortable with it. However, those photos would be preferable if you're studying human anatomy. But if you prefer drawing people with clothes on, I highly recommend that you search people with fun poses on the internet. Um, make sure you guys try to find poses more like these and don't draw poses like these. Figure drawing is something that you won't be the best at if you're just starting out, but the good news is that it's just a matter of practice and I assure you that you'll eventually get better as you get more confident at it. And as for the direct observational drawings, I recommend that you draw people in buses and trains if you regularly use public transport. But if that's not the case for you, I recommend that you ask friends and families if you could draw them. Tip number two, don't directly copy a photo and add that into your portfolio. This is just something that I notice when I watch other people's portfolios. And it's just my opinion, but I don't really recommend that you realistically copy a photo and add that into your portfolio. Because that is just going to show your technical abilities at most and not much of a story. While I believe showing your technical abilities are important, I believe most of your pieces should focus on telling a story. But if you really want to just copy a photo, then I recommend that you just add some of your twists into it or just make your own reference photos. Tip number three, start some projects you could add in your portfolio and also in your activity section. As I mentioned before when I showed you guys my children's book, it could be beneficial for you guys to start some kind of project that you could use to fill in your portfolio and also in your activity section. For another example, I created this icon pack and listed it on Etsy. And I have also worked on my school's yearbook and drew the cover. I think these projects could show the admission officers that you are already working as an artist by selling your works to the public. By the way, I'll leave links to my book and my icon pack in the description box, so if you guys are interested, feel free to check them out. Tip number four, attend Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards. I know that I mentioned this already, but I just wanted to tell you about it in more detail. So as I told you before, this is an awards program and you're eligible to enter if you're attending high school in the US and in Canada. It costs about $7 for artwork for entry. And one of the main reasons why I recommend that you do this is because there's a fairly high chance that you could win an award. As you can see here, there's a bunch of categories where you can submit your artworks. And if you win, you could get recognition from colleges. In my case, these colleges contact me after winning an award. Tip number five, attend National Portfolio Day. For those of you who are not familiar with National Portfolio Day, it's basically an event where you can get your portfolio reviewed. 
I personally recommend entering when you have compiled a fair amount of pieces in your portfolio and when you still have some time before you start applying to schools. So before 2020, I believe this event was mainly in person, but after that point, I think it switched to online Zoom events. So this is what it looks like when you go to the website. And when you click on register now, the upcoming portfolio review events pop up. When you click on one of the events, you can choose a school and get a review from a professor from that school. This event usually starts around October and mostly high school seniors who want their portfolio reviewed enter this event. I really encourage you to enter so you could get some feedback on your portfolio from college professors before you submit it. Tip number six, consider the order of your portfolio. The way I'd recommend you do this is to put your most proud and best piece at the start and put your second best work, work at the last so you can start strong and end strong. When picking your first piece for your portfolio, I would advise you to pick one that truly shows what kind of artist you are. In my case, I put Who is Autumn at the start and The Circle of Life at the end. And for the figure drawing pieces or your direct observational pieces, I recommend that you put those in the middle towards the end. I know that there are several other ways that you could organize your pieces of your portfolio, so feel free to follow those if you think my way wouldn't best present your portfolio. That was my last tip and that concludes my video. I just want to say that making this video is pretty cool because I used to watch these kind of accepted portfolio videos all the time and I can't believe I'm able to make this video. Anyway, I hope this video can help you guys in your college application journey and the making of your portfolio. And while applying to colleges is an intimidating process, just take things one at a time and I really hope you guys can get accepted from your dream schools. Okay, bye!